Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the default keyboard shortcuts in Reaper. Now we're going to start off with the keyboard shortcuts in the insert menu. And the first one is to insert a media file. And the keyboard shortcut on PC is the insert key. But if you're using a Mac like I am, we don't have an insert key. So what you can do is hold down the function and hit enter. Although on my keyboard, this didn't work. So what we can do is go to the actions menu, show action list, type in insert, find this action right here, and add a keyboard shortcut to it right here. And now if we hit that keyboard shortcut, it's going to open up our hard drive where we could choose files to insert into Reaper. So if we go over here and put our cursor on this track, hit that keyboard shortcut, we could insert a file into Reaper just like this. Double click, and it puts that file into Reaper. Although we could also use the Media Explorer right here, or just drag it from the Explorer on PC or the Finder on Mac into Reaper. Now the next option is to insert a marker. And the keyboard shortcut is the M key. Although it's also related to this action. Insert marker, but prompt for name, adding the Shift key to the keyboard shortcut, making it Shift M. So if we put our cursor right here, and type M, it creates a marker right there. Let's put one here and here. But notice, it doesn't allow us to name the marker by default. We can still do it by double-clicking the marker and add a name right here. Or we could do Shift-M and do it on the fly. So type Shift-M. It adds a marker, but it prompts us to add a name automatically. And we could add a color right here to our marker. So type M if we just want to quickly create a marker, or type Shift M if we want to name it on the fly. And we could also do this while we're playing Reaper. Just type M while we're playing. And it adds markers on the fly. Or we could hit Shift M to do the same thing. And we could insert them and name them on the fly. Now we could also add a marker or move them by choosing their number. So on PC, it's Control, and on Mac, it's Command. And we'll use the numbers on the QWERTY or Alpha keyboard, not on the numerical one. So put a cursor right here, Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, and 1, and that creates marker 1. Or we can move it right here by typing the same keyboard shortcut. And it rewrites that marker in this place, numbering it number one. So we could put number four over here or 10 over here, typing control on the PC, command on the Mac, and then zero. And that numbers it number 10. And again, we can move it to a different position with the same number like this which is useful if you've already given it a name and a color, like this. Just go over here, type that keyboard shortcut, and it moves that marker with that same number over here. And we could also jump or play back from markers using those same numbers without the modifier. Let's delete these and create some new ones. Type M. And now we could jump to marker one just by typing the one key, or two, three, or four. And we could jump to them during playback as well. Type one, 
or two, or three, or four. And it'll play back on the fly from those cursor positions. And we can also move to the next or previous marker using the brackets or square brackets on the computer keyboard. Right here, type the right one, and that goes forward, or the left one goes backwards. And again, this will work on the fly. So we could use them during playback. Now we could also insert regions in a similar way by creating a time selection. Let's create one from bar four to bar five. Go to the insert menu. We could see right here, insert region from time selection. And the keyboard shortcut is shift R. So if we type shift R, it creates a region based on the time selection bounds. Now we still have to name it separately by right-clicking, edit region, maybe give it a color, or we could just change our action right over here. Instead of inserting region from time selection, we could insert it and then edit it at the same time. And we can add a different keyboard shortcut for it, or just replace this one. So now we can define that region from bar four to five, hit that keyboard shortcut. It creates a region, but allows us to name it and give it a color on the fly. So now we have a region up here, which are very useful for rearranging our song. We can move this over to here, move it back to here to try out different arrangements. But we could also jump to different regions using those brackets or square brackets to go forward or back or on the fly during playback, we could jump to them using smooth seek, which is going to allow us to play back after the current region finishes. And for this, on the PC, we use the Alt key and on Mac, we use the Option key. And again, use those numbers from before, one through nine and zero for 10. Hit Alt or Option two to jump to this region. Alt or Option three to jump to this region. But if we do it on the fly during playback, watch what happens. If we jump to three, it waits till one is over before going to three. If we jump back to two, it waits for three to finish before jumping to two. Finishing the playback of the region before it jumps to the next, creating a more seamless playback. So those are the markers and regions. But we could also insert a tempo or a time signature change marker using Shift C. Let's put our cursor at bar three, type Shift C, and we can add a tempo change right here. Let's leave this one at 120 and 4.4. Four. Let's add another one at bar four. Let's change this to 125. Let's get add a tempo change right there. And at bar five, let's make it 130. And I put a tempo change over there and the music adjusted to that change. And we can move our markers like this by grabbing them or we'll hold down control on the PC, command on the Mac to move them and just change the timing of the first tempo, locking the right side of that marker. Or we could lock both sides, Alt Control on the PC, Option Command on the Mac, and it's going to lock both sides of their tempo while adjusting this one. Again, very useful for creating tempo or time signature changes. And then finally, right down here, we could insert a new track 
into our project. And the keyboard shortcut is Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac. Just select where you want to insert that track. After this one, hit the keyboard shortcut to insert a track. Now, there's no keyboard shortcut for these menu items over here, but we can still add some as I tend to think they're very useful. For example, if we choose multiple tracks, we could add as many tracks as we want. Let's add three and then name them guitar. And if we add them, it adds three tracks, all named guitar one through three. Very helpful if you want to add multiple tracks with similar names all at once. Or this option right here, virtual instrument on new track. And that's going to create a new track based on a virtual instrument plugin we choose. So if I choose this one, it creates a new track already in record with this virtual instrument plugin already on that track. Very helpful. But like I said, there's no keyboard shortcut assigned to these actions, but we can always add them in the action list. So that's pretty much it. That's the default keyboard shortcuts in the insert menu in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!